Today, I want to talk about what is the church built on? What is the purpose of the church? But before I do, I want to tell you a little story. This typical family was coming to church one morning. They got in the car. And the dad made the comment about, you know, the sermons were just too long and boring. <laughs> he was just going, he didn't know, they were just too long and boring. And then his wife says, yeah, and the music is just so loud. They need to tone it down a little bit. His daughter said, well, you know, they all key a lot too. You know, it just, the little boy said, yeah, and this lady that sits in front of us, we can't, I can't see what's going on. And then a minute he goes, yeah, but daddy, for the price, you can't beat the entertainment. Now, there's a lot of people say, no, whoa. But unfortunately, that's the way a lot of people look at church. It's a place to socialize and to be entertained. And that's not what church is here for. Church was built by Jesus Christ for His people. And in chapter 16, verse 13, Jesus asked His disciples, who was He? If you notice there in verse 16, there, Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it to thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Jesus said, Good for you, Peter. You've been talking to my Father. That means Peter had been working on his spiritual life. He had been praying, talking to God. And Jesus knew this because that was not revealed except through the Father as to who He was. And Jesus gave Peter a blessing, a promise, and a prediction there. He said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it to thee. And then if you look on down in verse 18, He said, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. I want you to notice there, Upon this rock, which is the truth that Peter had revealed through the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. That is the rock or the truth that the church is built upon. The second part of that was, I will build my church. So who builds the church? Jesus Christ. He is the head of the church and He builds it. The church is not based on a political figurehead or a physical leader. It's based upon the leadership of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the foundation of the church. And he also made a prediction in verse 18. He said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In other words, this church is going to last because it's built upon the truth that... Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Not just a God, but the living God. And Peter, in spite of his big mouth, he knew this because it was revealed to him through the Holy Spirit. Because he studied and applied himself to grow spiritually. Now, in order for us to know this and to understand this, we have to be saved through the blood of Jesus Christ. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Apostle Paul says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, and old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. When we're saved, there's two things that happens. Something happens to us on the inside, and it changes our outlook on life. It changes our habits, it changes our desires and our wants. But also something happens to us physically we automatically become a member of the family of God. That is where the church comes in. When Jesus Christ saves us through His blood, that makes us a member of the family of God. And if you apply that and grow spiritually, you're going to want to become a church member. It's not required to be saved, but it is recommended, and that's what God wants of us. And if we're going to grow spiritually, that's what we need. And I want to skip to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 because Apostle Paul gives some of the signs of a healthy church. You say, well, what do we need to know that for? We need to know if we are part of a healthy church 
or if we're dead wood that needs to be cut away and pruned to be made to grow. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, Apostle Paul speaking, he says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. A church that is healthy and growing is going to have unity and harmony. If you notice what he says here, For as the body is one and hath many members, all the members of that one body, being many, are one. In other words, all the different parts work together. As a church member, we work together to bring the service and to bring forth the word of the Lord. And it's important that each and every person contributes to the service to bring forth God's word. Some people contribute by worshiping. Others by singing, some by teaching Sunday school class, some by maintenance. But that all the parts of the church body are important. And they have to work together to have a successful body in Christ. The second part is you have to have an absence of favoritism. If you look at verse 13, he said, For by one Spirit we are all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made to drink into one Spirit. It's important that we realize that there's no one person more important in God's kingdom than the other. At the time Apostle Paul wrote this, slavery was common. So you had slave owners and slaves all worshiping together. The slave owner was no more or less important than the slave. Today, we're not separated by slavery. However, we have different races. We have different incomes. We have different interests. That does not make any one of us more important than the other one. Sometimes you'll see somebody and say, well, you know, that person, they're, they're big in the community. They carry more weight. In God's kingdom, we all carry the same weight and respect of a person. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter who you are. God looks at each and every one of us the same. And that's the way it is in His church. In verses 14 through 20, He talks about individual dignity. He says, For the body is not one member, but many. If the feet shall say, Because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, therefore not of the body. And if the ear shall say, Behold, I am not the eye, I am not of the body, therefore is not the body. If the whole body were an eye, what were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smell? You say, well, that's going to make sense. Apostle Paul was using a little bit of humor here. What if your whole body was just one eye? You wouldn't be able to walk. If it was an ear, you wouldn't be able to see. What if everybody in the church was an organ player? Who would listen to the music? Who would sing to the music? What if everybody in the church was a Sunday school teacher? Who are they going to teach? We're all many parts and we work together. Apostle Paul says, your feet don't go on strike and every part of the body still work. If my feet went on strike, I couldn't walk to the refrigerator Get snack food. Therefore, my stomach was suffering. Y'all can tell where my interests lie sometimes. But it's the same way with our church life. It's important that each and every person do their part to serve God. The church does not operate properly if we don't have the music from the choir, if we don't have the Sunday school teachers, if we don't have the people in the congregation. It's important that we each do our part and serve the Lord to the best of our ability. 